Welcome to Life in Calgary, Alberta. Guys, I'm your host, Patrick Murray, and you know, I oftentimes get people saying to me, Patrick, should I buy a condo in Calgary, Alberta? So today, I'm going to discuss all things condominiums in Calgary, Alberta, so you have a better understanding about what's going on with the market, and at the same time, uh, how you can go ahead and buy a condo and what you need to watch out for. But before I do that, if this is your first time to this channel and you want to know everything there is about what it's like to eat, sleep, breathe, live and play in Calgary, Alberta, then guys, just hit that subscribe button and click that little bell so you get notified every single time I release a new video. Now, I have to tell you, I've been living in Calgary since 2001. That's when I first moved here, but I've been a realtor here since 2010. So I've got some specialized knowledge about the city of Calgary and the bedroom commu communities, such as Airdie, Airdrie, Cochrane, uh, Chestermere, and Okotok. So if you are considering a move to our great city or one of these bedroom communities and you would like some assistance in purchasing a home, please feel free to reach out to me with a text, an email, or a phone call. My information is below and I will absolutely get back to you. All right, guys, let's do this. Let's talk about should I buy a condo in Calgary, Alberta, right after this. Hey guys, I get it. You're considering a move to Calgary. You want to purchase a home, but one of the things you're looking at is perhaps uh, purchasing a condominium and you're wondering if it's a good idea to buy a condominium in Calgary, Alberta. Well, guys, that's what the topic is today. I'm going to take you through condominiums, talk about market trends, talk about what you need to watch out for and how you can navigate the condo market here in Calgary so you know exactly what you're getting into. Calgary is all sorts of different types of condos. So there are some high rise condominiums and there are some low rise condominiums. And let's not disregard townhomes. Many people, when they think of condominiums, they think of traditional condominiums in a large building. But townhomes or townhouses are indeed condominium projects are as well. You do pay a condo fee and they have a board and they work much the same as any other condo complex within the city. So that's something to consider as well. Now, depending on the area of the city you live in, uh, you know, or the community amenities and the amenities for the building or the project itself, um, and of course, square footage, size, bedrooms, that sort of thing. Prices are also going to differ. You know, historically or, or, or quite often, you'll find that uh, condominiums in the inner city, for example, are a little more expensive than condominiums in other sectors of the city. And why? Well, it's because of the proximity to the downtown and everything that there is to offer there. I mean, sometimes you can leave your car parked for months at a time because you can walk everywhere. So you don't necessarily need your car when you live downtown. Now, that's not to say that some other condominium projects in the suburbs aren't in well-designed projects or, or communities as well, and because there are some terrific condo projects throughout the suburbs that are well-designed and they too can be expensive also. So has the condominium market fallen in prices? Is the market going up? You know, what's going on? What are the trends been? Where's the market going? Well, guys, the best thing I can do here is to, I'll show you. So I'm going to show you a couple graphics here and I'll explain exactly what you're looking at. Okay, guys, so let's take a look at what's going on with the condominium market here in Calgary. So these are some stats as of the end of last month, because those are the latest stats. We're in August right now, in the middle of August. So of course, we're not through the the end of August, so we don't have those statistics yet, but these are the latest and greatest here. So in the city of Calgary right now, um, just so you can see what's going on, is out of all the listings available for sale, 69.3 of the condo listings sold. So that's a 69.3 absorption rate. As you, you can see here on this chart, that means we're in seller's territory. Um, and there's reasons why we're in seller's territory. It's because um, there is... Uh, condos that there aren't a lot of condos available for sale which means that um you know they're all right guys let's get into this now let's talk about uh condominiums and what's going on with the market so these are the latest and greatest stats are as of the end of july 2023 we're in the middle of august right now so the end of august hasn't yet come hence uh july 2023 is the latest and greatest stats that we have um, so this is traditional condominiums. We'll take a quick look at townhomes in a minute, but you can see by this little chart here in this dial, 
Um, the absorption rate in Calgary is 69.3% for condominiums. So that means out of the 1,114 listings available for sale last month, 772 of them, or 69.3 listings, were sold in July. And that means we're considered in seller's territory. Why? Well, it's a supply-demand issue. Um, condos are very popular right now. Uh, there are more buyers than there are uh, condos for sale. So the market is going up in price. And here we have the benchmark price. Now, the benchmark price is a better, more stable way of discussing pricing as opposed to talking about average or median because you can have an unusual amount of high-end sales one month or perhaps a lack of those high-end sales one month, which could skew the data. So this is a more stable way of discussing pricing. So we're talking about benchmark pricing, and this is the average. So this is all types of condos, whether it's a one bedroom, a two bedroom, a three bedroom, but it discusses what the average condo would sell for in Calgary. And month over month, it's up this past month 0.89% from the previous month, but year over year, you can see it's up 12.13%. Now, this chart here to my right is a 13 month market history. And you can see that in last July, it was $272,800. So, anywhere you see these dark colors for the month, that's prices going up. The blue ones are prices coming down a little. And it does fluctuate throughout the year up and down a little bit. Um, that's not unusual. But you can see that since uh, January uh, 2023, prices have been going up. 273, 281, 2, 288, 5. You know, in April, it was 294, 100. In May, it was 298, 6. We broke that $300,000 mark in June with 303, 200. And now we're at 305, $900. So, What's happening with the benchmark price trend history? Well, this is a 10-year benchmark price trend history for condos. So um, there's a couple things to consider. We see it as 305 here for July. We see in 2023, it says 292.071. Well, that's confusing, Patrick. Well, keep in mind, 2023 is not yet complete. So that's why it's taking into account all these prices to come up with this uh, for the year to come up with this 292.071. But realistically, it's likely going to finish higher in 2023, um, especially than it did in 2022. We can say 2022 is 271,975. In 2023, it's 292,071. So that's, uh, you know, a 7.39%. And in 2022, it jumped 8.67% from 2021. Now, to try to explain a little bit what happened here. Uh, Calgary had some difficult economic times for a while. Um, you know, our, our, um, our business uh, businesses in Calgary weren't not just Calgary, but in Alberta as a whole, we're not doing so well. While the other the rest of the country was thriving, particularly in you know 2018, 19, that sort of thing. Um, and while our prices were decreasing, um, their prices in other centers such as Toronto, and Vancouver, were going up, up, up uh, by great leaps and bounds. Um, so you can see here that we've gone down in price. And what happens is. Um, when the market goes down, there's a shift in the supply demand. So there were more condos for sale than there were buyers. Hence, uh, sellers were competing to get their uh, their property sold. So they were reducing prices. You can see it kind of went down. And we had a huge oversupply issue. You know, there were some months where we had 10 months supply of condominiums. So that's a lot. Um, so now we don't have that issue. It's been going up, up, up. And now it's quite the reverse. We could use more properties for sale. And here's this graphic again, just shows that active versus sold. Um, so uh, it's month over more month, it's down 0.18% for the active listing. So again, the supply is going down year over year. The supply is way down almost 30%. But the solds uh, month over month were down 9.92%. Uh, but year over year, our solds are up 50 over 50% from July of last year, even though the active supply is down almost 30%. So that really speaks to how hungry uh, people are for housing in our city. And remember when I was saying that uh, we had like a 10 month supply, that sort of thing. Well, we can now see that prices for last month, um, the average days on market because of the prices and because of the competition that's going on out there for, for buyers, those houses or condos are jumping off the market quite quickly. So we can see that, um, you know, 27 days on market was the average. So that's certainly not a 10-month supply. And you can see it's been quite healthy all year long as well. 
And then this just shows the market distribution, uh, the greatest where the amount the sales were, depending on the market. So that two to three hundred thousand range had the greatest at forty seven percent, followed by the three to four hundred at twenty six percent. There were uh, that under two hundred, which you know they're they're not that many of them. Uh, you know, just over fourteen percent. Then the four to uh, five hundred, five to six hundred, so on and so forth. Okay, guys, so let's look at row housing or townhomes in the city of Calgary as a whole. So keep in mind, uh, townhomes are, are condominiums as well. They have a condo corporation, just like uh, uh, traditional condominium buildings, that sort of thing. So you can see here, it's still very high sellers market in Calgary as of the end of July 2023, with the listing absorption rate of 117.63%. So um, there were, we had 397 listings, but there were 467 listings or 117.63% of these 397 listings were sold in July. That's because they're dipping into inventory from previous months. So you can see that uh, supply is disappearing in this market. Now let's look at the benchmark price. So uh, more square footage in townhomes, generally speaking. Uh, so you can imagine the benchmark price is a little bit more here as compared to tr traditional condos. And here it is at $407,500. Now it's up 1.88% from last month. And year over year, it's up nearly 14% to 13.7% from last year. And here's that uh, 12 month price, 13 month price distribution chart. Again, blue is down, uh, the dark color is up. It's common to see a little fluctuation, especially in the winter months. We usually see it dip down a little bit. But then you can see here, which is unusual, you know, January, February, March, uh, we really exploded in this market and it's kept going. And so last year, the benchmark price is 358, 400, and here we are at 407,500 already. Um, so this kind of tells you uh, where we've come in the last year. Here's where we've come from um, in the last uh, 10 years. Um, so in 2014, it was 318.075. Then it went up in 2015. Then we have a bit of reduction. Um, in fact, we dipped in uh, below 300,000 in 2018, even lower in 2019, even lower in 2020. And then, of course, the pandemic hit. And again, this is that economic hardship that Alberta saw in these years. But then we bounce back and our markets, our, our job markets sort of doing better. Um, you know, people were buying what Alberta was selling. And, and you can see that uh, there was demand to live here. And we have a lot of migration to our city. Um, the people moving inter interprovincially from, uh, you know, BC and Ontario, because we're much more affordable than those cities, yet we're still a large center. Um, and at the same time, we have a lot of uh, people moving here from out of country right now as well. So migration rates to Canada are through the roof and that drives the demand for housing. So we can see prices are increasing in 2021, 2022, and here we are 2023. Again, keep in mind, 2023 isn't over. So it's trying to take into consideration January to July so far, but we're going to finish much higher in 2023, given what I'm seeing in prices, if they continue where they're going. And again, this just shows again the actives 397, 467 sold. Now for the actives, um, the supply is down 6.15% from June. And year to year, it's down almost, well, almost 46%, 45.99% from July of last year. The sold listings down 10.88% from last month. Yeah, believe it or not, right? Look at the actives, look at the sold. And that's down 10%. Wow. Uh, but year over year, um, the amount of sold is up. Um, you know, 8.1% from July, even though year over year, the supply is down nearly 46%. So that, again, really shows you that we need more housing here. And the days on market here, you can see uh, 20 days in July last year was 30. So again, just demonstrating that um, uh, people are uh, wanting to get into the market. The price distribu distribution is at three to 400 range, followed by the four to 500 range, followed by the two to 300 range. All about a five to six, and so on and so forth. Um, six to seven, seven to eight. Over here, it's under. This is very rare. You can see there were only forty-three of these under two hundred thousand dollar properties that were sold. Um, so just the price distribution chart here as well. So how do amenities differ from condo project to condo project? Well, you know, it's 
important to remember that, you know, when you're purchasing into a large high-rise building, for example, uh, you may get a lot more amenities with that project. So, for example, you might uh, have a large gym in that place. You might have a cardio room as well. There might be a yoga room. It could have a pool. Um, you know, of course, there are, are elevators to maintain and water systems to push water up all through uh, that building as well. Uh, you know, some of these buildings will offer movie theaters. Um, you know, some of them have guest suites so that your guests have somewhere to stay uh, when they're in town. And there will be community rooms and that sort of thing where you can go and hang out or you can rent for the events and so on and so forth. Now, generally, like I said, you'll see these in high-rise apartment buildings or condo buildings. But you, you can also see them occasionally in some low-rise condo buildings or projects that are a little more expensive. But historically speaking, uh, in most low-rise condominium projects, you'll find that they might be a little less expensive in regards to uh, either the price or the condo fees. And that has to do with the fact that many of these projects have less amenities. Uh, you know, they might not have a pool. They might not have a gym that sort of thing. So these are all things to keep in mind where the amenities differ from project to project. Now earlier I had alluded to condo fees. Uh, so let's talk about condo fees and maintenance right here. So uh, first and foremost, when you're a condominium owner, you own a portion of the common property. I mean, yes, you own your individual unit, but you are a shareholder in that corporation, almost like buying into a business. So you uh, are a shareholder in that business and you um, have to contribute in the way of your condominium fees to help support that project. So what do your fees go towards? Well, for example, uh, there will be cleaning of uh, common interior areas there will be the upkeep of the grounds and this includes snow removal in the winter time uh, you know if there's a pool there's upkeep a pool those gym areas etc those need to be cleaned and maintained as well um, if there's elevators in the building those are expensive those will need to be maintained water systems uh, a plethora of things that your condo fees can go towards so you also have to keep in mind that if you are um, buying into a project that has a lot of amenities your fees might be a little higher because you have to help support the corporation to pay for those privileges and all of those amenities now townhomes for example uh, they may not have as many amenities that you have to pay for Traditionally speaking, uh, many townhome projects are much less than a regular condominium corporation. Uh, and the reason why is because there are less interior spaces to look after. There aren't those gyms, there aren't those elevators, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, some older low rise buildings, for example, um, they may have some higher fees too. Why? Because those older buildings have a lot more square footage than some of the new builds that we're seeing now, because as time goes on, uh, not just in Calgary, but in other cities throughout the world, it's about density, getting more people into a building, that sort of thing, which means smaller living spaces, and your fees are to uh, a large degree, uh, you know, reflected on the living space as well, depending on the contribution uh, of the unit within your building. So these are all things to consider. Uh, another thing is, is a reserve fund. Uh, reserve funds are important. So if you own a house and you're like me and your furnace broke down like last year when mine did i didn't have a reserve fund i had to flip that bill right away now some homeowners do i dropped the ball i didn't have it but think of it this way uh, when you're in a condominium corporation you contribute to a reserve fund and that's the rainy day fund for um, out of the ordinary expenses or repairs that need to be looked after in the corporation some people say you know well gee, you know, I don't like paying all these condo fees. And of course, nobody wants to pay more than they have to. But the thing to remember is condo fees aren't necessarily evil as long as they are going along supporting all the amenities in the building. And you're thinking about what are all the amenities that it is supporting in the building. Condo fees can be a very good thing. So it's like anything, you pay to play. So if I have a pool in, at my house or something like that, I'll have to pay to support that pool. It's the same thing with condo fees. So condo corporations will have a board for the condo corporation and bylaws to abide by. So 
what does your board do? Well, your board is elected by the members of the condo corporation. So all of the unit holders within the corporation that live there. And uh, what this board does is it oversees the running of the complex. So these people should meet together at regular intervals. They need to discuss what's going on in the building. Um, they'll you know, look after allocating funds for the upkeep of the building, ensuring that uh, you know, they're staying as close to the budget as they can, of course, to allocate the fees properly. Um, they discuss major issues that come up. Maybe there's a big repair that has to happen, um, that sort of thing. So they discuss how they're gonna look after that. And they look after a lot of different little bylaw issues. So maybe somebody's got a noisy pet. Um, maybe somebody's got some items on their balcony that the board has said, you know, you're not supposed to have those on the balcony. Or maybe there's something in their parking stall that's cluttering it all up and they're not supposed to have that there. So a lot of little minor things that they look after as well. And boards will also talk about pets. So some boards will allow pets, some boards only allow specific types of pets and uh, some boards allow no pets. So that's something else to consider also. The good news is most boards have a management company that they hire to assist them with uh, managing the building and these people look after the accounting of the building they make sure the building is and the corporation is staying compliant uh, with municipal provincial and federal bylaws that sort of thing uh, to ensure that everything is running smoothly so remember earlier i said buying into a condominium is almost like buying into a business you need to make sure that you're uh, mitigating risk as you go into this purchase. You wanna make sure you're buying into a good corporation. You wouldn't wanna invest in a bad building or a bad, uh, a bad business, I should say. And likewise, you don't want to invest in a, in a bad condo corporation. So how do you go about this? Well, it starts with getting a good realtor to guide you properly through the process. And this realtor, besides putting conditions in a purchase contract, such as home inspection, so you can ensure that the unit is what you expect it to be, and a financing condition should require it to make sure that the lender will approve your purchase, um, they can put in something called a condominium documents review condition. So what that is, is it requires the seller to provide you a whole bunch of contractual documentation about the corporation at their cost, to provide to you and your realtor, and then you will pay to have a condominium documents review specialist to review the documentation so that you can go into your purchase with eyes wide open so you know uh, what issues are going on in the building, that sort of thing. Now, the good news is, don't worry, if you're working with a good realtor, your realtor should be able to guide you along the process and refer you to good condominium documents review people because this is super important and it's unique to condominiums. It's not like buying a house. This documentation is something you need reviewed so that you can ensure that you're protected. This helps to mitigate your risk. So what is this person gonna do? Well, they're gonna review the board meeting minutes over the last 12 months. They're gonna read through, see what the issues are. They're gonna crunch some numbers. They're gonna look at the budget. They're gonna look at the condo fees. Is there enough coming in to look after the day-to-day -day operations of the condominium complex? They're gonna look at the reserve fund study, which looks at the building and says, hey, in so many years time, this needs to be replaced. In so many times, this needs, years time, this needs to be replaced, that sort of thing. And they're gonna go through and see what needs to be replaced right away. What are the costs for all of these things? You know, with inflation, how much should fees be going up over time? Does the board have enough uh, in the reserve to cover these future expenses, that sort of thing? Uh, nobody wants something called a special assessment coming down on them. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, they're unforeseeable and they do happen. But, and let's, much like my furnace I mentioned earlier, it's a, a pocket out-of-pocket expense that you're not expecting. We do our best to mitigate this by having the review expert to look through to ensure you're buying into a good corporation so that you are properly protected and you can be rest assured that the building you're buying into is being well run. People often ask me, Patrick, what's better, new or resale condominium? Well, guys, I get it. Everybody loves new and shiny, right? Who doesn't like new and shiny things? Uh, you know, a brand new condo, that's pretty exciting, right? So there's a couple things to consider. Uh, buying a new condo versus a resale condo isn't necessarily bad, but you have to keep in mind that um, a new condo, for example, 
um, there's no history to it. So for example, uh, because it's brand new, there's, you don't know what's going on in a corporation. You don't know, there's not much that the board has been discussing because in many cases, the board hasn't even been formed. So that means that uh, perhaps there, um, there's nothing to look back on to see what the issues are with the building. Now, something else to keep in mind is these new shiny buildings, again, because the condo corporations aren't formed because they don't have enough residents yet, the builder will be looking after the day-to-day -day operations until the corporation can be legally formed. And the builder can maintain buildings at a much lesser cost than the corporation can. Therefore, people could be lured in by low condo fees. But don't be fooled because once the board is formed, these fees will go up. Now, you remember when I was saying there's no history? So let's consider buying a resale condominium. You can look back at the condo documents. You can see what's happened with the building, where it's going, what are the major issues, that sort of thing. And, you know, I always say to people, something to consider when you're buying a newer condo is maybe buy something that's a couple years old because most of the issues that are going to come up initially with the building or if there's any issues with the build itself will show itself within the first couple of years and the corporation will have either dealt with it or be dealing with it and there will be a plan in place. If you're buying brand new and those issues come up, guess what? You're part of the process to look after those issues that are coming up. So these are all things to consider. You know, sometimes elevator systems aren't what they're supposed to be. Sometimes water systems aren't what they're supposed to be in the building. Uh, we want to make sure that you're protected. So uh, keep that in mind when you're buying new or resale. Regardless of whether you're buying a condo or a house, you can't truly mitigate all the risk, but we do our best to reduce the risk as much as possible. Many people want to know if they can rent their condos because some people want to purchase a condo as an income uh, property down the road or you know maybe they're going to move out and buy another property and they want to rent that one. So that's a great question to consider. So many boards and many bylaws of those boards will prohibit you from having a short-term rental. So that means no Airbnbs, that sort of thing. And why? Well, it's disruptive. Uh, having an Airbnb, you don't know who's coming and going. Um, it's disruptive and it can cause damage if you get the wrong people in there. So many buildings do not allow you to. Some will, so that's something to consider. Now, long-term rentals, that's generally okay, but some corporations will require you to put down a large deposit as protection just in case those renters cause damage to the common areas of the property for the corporation. And, you know, something else to consider, if you get the wrong tenants in there, uh, the Condominium Act does allow condo boards to evict your tenants. And guess what? There's nothing you, to, you can do. So if the board evicts your tenant, you're out. So there are some things to consider. There can be some risk. It's all about working with a, a good uh, realtor to ensure you know uh, that you're going in with eyes wide open. You understand the project you're getting into. And at the same time, uh, you know, it's important that you understand how you can rent your property get the right tenant in, maybe consider a management company down the road to manage your individual unit if you do rent it out. Are you overwhelmed yet? Hey guys, I get it, not to worry. I know there's lots to consider when you're looking at buying a condominium in Calgary, Alberta. But the main thing to consider is to ensure you're working with a great realtor that understands condominiums. Uh, this person can guide you along the process, ensure you're working with the right professionals to mitigate that risk to ensure you get the right product for you and your family. And you know what? Buying a condominium in Calgary can be a great investment opportunity and it can be great for resale. So like I said earlier guys, if you are considering a move to the city of Calgary or one of the bedroom communities such as uh, Chestermere, Airdrie, Cochrane or Okotoks, please feel free to send me a text, an email or a phone call. If you require assistance to purchase a home, I will absolutely get back to you so you can start living your life in Calgary, Alberta.